Welcome to the Financial Blueprint, Prime Revenue's new series investigating the challenges that we're seeing in supply chains globally as issues arise in payments. My name's Dave Barber. I run our working capital solutions team and our program management teams globally. Caleb Tyndall here has joined me as well, and he runs our account executive and supplier sales groups. Today, we're gonna to be covering some of the challenges that we've seen over the last several years as the pandemic has hit, the supply chains have tightened, and how both technology, people, and processes can help us address that with our suppliers. Companies have a lot to worry about these days. We've seen it, we've, we've met with customers, we've met with suppliers. Inflation is rising, interest rates are starting to rise again. There's disruptions in the supply chain, both physical and financial. So what are some of the ways that technology can help address some of those issues? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, really, when you think about sort of the, the payments piece of this, right? And, and when we take a look at the, the financial supply chain, most people today seem to think that going and paying a supplier is the same as going to buy a cup of coffee with your smartphone. And it really couldn't be further from the truth. So there's a lot of complexity in, in kind of how these B2B payments are made. Um, and, and really all of that complexity in the processes that go into these uh, uh, payments uh, adds unnecessary risk to a, any supply chain. And that's sort of top to bottom. So are there any examples you can share with specific instances, suppliers, buyers, or both? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the things that we're really hearing a lot in the market, right, is, is uh, if we take a step back, just looking at the timing of payments, right? So Prime Revenue did a survey of suppliers and 49% of those respondents leaned into the fact their number one issue today is late payments. And 60% of those respondents uh, said that they were chasing their customers 10 times a month just wow. to get paid. Yeah, so sort of continuing in that vein, uh, really suppliers are, are seeing, uh, they're bearing the brunt of, of a large cost just in figuring out when they're gonna get paid. No, I can appreciate that. That's, yeah, because we both work with suppliers and buyers on both sides and we, we, we see the tickets and the concerns that come across. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are some of the causes of late payments? Yeah, so, so typically it's unintentional, right? So top to bottom, anytime you're submitting an invoice or that invoice is accompanying a service or a product with it, uh, we see uh, a lot of errors pop up in the actual invoice itself or in the delivery, right? So, so if you yeah. think about manufacturing, there's all kinds of issues that happen during shipment. And so that can sort of uh, offset what's a, what an invoice value would be. Um, and really kind of what we're seeing there is that buyers tend to be overwhelmed, whether they're managing several different payment processes and methods, uh, or they're, they're just uh, underwater with the volume of invoices they're having to individually process through their through their complex processes like three-way match and things like that. Yeah. And it's interesting because we see companies that have big suppliers that are multinational, multi-billion dollar companies yeah. that have their own processes. Yeah. And the little guys are the same way, right? And so it's so it could be a technology issue, it could be a process issue, it could be just a, a, a resource issue. Yeah, so. so it spans the gamut, right? So, yeah. so from multi-billion dollar, you know, Fortune 50 companies who are processing into, uh, individual invoices by hand in factories yep. uh, to, to everywhere to the, to the sort of mom and pop version of the supply chain uh, where they have a few invoices that they have to sort of go back and, and count the, the inventory on the shelf to match up with. Exactly right. And, they're, and those, those guys may be living hand to fist where they have to get paid in order to pay their employees because it's a, a small company, a mom and pop, as you said. Exactly, right? And, and that's really kind of where technology can lean into this, right? Oh. And so that's where we can sort of start seeing, and then the market's seeing it provided today, uh, where suppliers are really sort of demanding for this insight into their customer's approval process. So Perfect. they can see all of their invoices uh, it's kind of top to bottom so they can get that critical insight into their decision making process to be able to run their business. Yeah. Otherwise, you've got leaders in finance who are assuming that this cash is coming in. And again, the same sort of uh, to go back to our survey, it shows that suppliers are having to chase customers monthly, several times a week to figure out when they're going to get paid. Yeah. And, and as we always say, like information is, is, is the key, right? So knowing exactly. when I'm going to get paid, it may not be early, it may not be late, but as long as I know like when that check is coming in and I can, yeah. I can run my business, yeah. then, um, then yeah, that's, that's, that's super powerful for, for whether you're an entrepreneur or, or, a, or like you said, a multinational corporate. So. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where you're seeing a lot of, um, uh, regulation pop up now too, right? Cause to, to your point, uh, some of these multinational corporations may on their own kind of drag their feet a little bit on paying these suppliers because they have their own cash flow goals. Yeah. Um, and so we're seeing regulations pop up globally that are kind of addressing that specific behavior, where in some cases this may be intentional, um, where, where you're seeing a specific sort of legal uh, precedent coming into place where people have to be paid within a certain amount of time. Yeah. So that's driving a lot of this. 
Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we're seeing that definitely in Europe. We're seeing it in Australia. Um, and these companies, are they're running their own business already, and they've got these additional restrictions and constraints that that they're not equipped to maybe deal with that technology can help them address. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And and to, to your sort of your opening point is really that all of this is being compounded by macro level events, right? So as you see inflation grow and people are uh, you know, actively engaged in trying to get more direct material today because it is expensive yep. tomorrow, knowing when that cash is coming in is absolutely critical for financial leadership. For sure, yeah. And as we've seen over the last two years when, as we said, Supply chains are cr are crashing to a halt. Yes. And 20 years ago, they started just-in-time inventory and like being minimal and um, and keeping as little inventory as possible. Now that's ev well, that's evolving significantly because if I can't get what I need, I can't make what I need right. to go sell. Exactly. So um, so yeah, absolutely. For, uh, again, both on the buyer and supplier side, that visibility I think is 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 critical. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, yeah, I mean, not to sort of draw the analogy too close together, but if you think about just in time kind of financial supply chain, yep. that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and so the, the critical factors of that is sort of invoice approvals and being able to see where my invoice is. If it hasn't been approved, why is that? Yeah. Uh, and then the, the additional pieces that come with any sort of payments platform and technology wise is all the remittance, financial reporting and the automation to that. Right. So if I'm a financial leadership, right, if I'm a director in finance, who's trying to run this business, I can't consistently, or maybe I can, but typically I would say you're not spending all of your time logging into payments portals and trying to pull information out. Yep. Automation is going to become kind of the king of this, I think, where that critical data and the insight is being pushed out to me so that I can push it into my decision-making process and run my business effectively. Yeah, and I think operationally as well, um, we talk about, like, so we've talked, like, the money moving is one thing, right? The, the other is... What are my accounts payable people having to do? How many yeah. calls are they fielding exactly. every day from a supplier saying, I was supposed to get paid yesterday or I'm supposed to get paid tomorrow. Is the check yeah. in the mail? Is the check in the mail? Is the check in the mail? Um, so where do you see technology and, and, and some of these service offerings coming into play there? Yeah, so having that central point, and that's kind of the key when you think about the AP piece, right? So having that central point where uh, all of this is housed in one place where suppliers can see it and they get that insight in one place helps your AP team uh, sort of synchronize on the one place to check for these, yep. right? So they can send suppliers not only to kind of get them to stop calling in, right? Because this effectively shuts off kind of the troubleshooting on the supplier side yep. where their accounts receivable are making just as many calls, if not more, as the accounts payable team is receiving, yep. right? So it, it gives, it sort of gets the synergy there where it stops the calls coming into AP because the information's there and available to the AR group who would otherwise be picking up the phone and calling. So we definitely don't want to make this a prime revenue sales pitch. I think we're talking about macro events, micro events, things that are happening in general in supply chains. You and your team talk to hundreds of suppliers a day. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're hearing from them that they require or need or asking for that maybe is not available in a supplier portal today? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's a there's a myriad of factors. I think all of it sort of boils down to automation, reporting, visibility, and consolidation. And and I, and I think consolidation is an important piece because we deal again with a lot of multinational companies, suppliers, and buyers. And they may have operations in the U.S. They may have operations in Europe. They may have operations in Asia Pacific. And for them to have to go to five or ten different places right. to go, you know, report get that information is 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 very painful from from our experience. So. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Please don't forget to check out our other videos in the series on LinkedIn at Prime Revenue, as well as our website, primerevenue.com. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.